This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 2. What's new in digital manga? Even though J-Manga is shut down, there are still plenty of places you can read manga legally online. If you like shoujo manga, Viz Media has been releasing some of their older OOP shoujo titles digitally. Red River, Please Save My Earth, and From Far Away. All three titles have gotten strong recommendations. From Far Away is a fantasy series, while Please Save My Earth has more sci-fi elements. Both are great titles for tweens and teens and are highly recommended by librarians. Red River is for an older teen audience and is a cracktastic series. I've only read a few volumes from later in the series, but I was hooked from the first volume. I read and had to have it. I have been collecting it in print since it wasn't available digitally when I started and have over half the series now, so I don't think I'll be getting it digitally. But if you haven't tried the series, I would highly recommend it. Another nice trend I've noticed coming from publishers is to start making some of their digital titles available outside of their apps. This move seems to be due to platform or other restrictions. Viz Media has put their mature titles on Barnes & Noble's Nook device and Nook app, no doubt to get around the iOS arbitrary rule application. They also wouldn't have to create another app specifically for those titles, since their current app would be rated older teen at the most. Yen Press, whose app is iOS only, now has titles available not only on Nook devices and the Nook app, but also in the Google Play Store in the book section. Right now, it's only their original adaptations like Maximum Ride and Witch and Wizard and some Manwa, but since most of their Japanese titles are Square Enix, who apparently doesn't want anyone to read their titles digitally since they restrict them to their own digital store, which is streaming only and sucks at the best of times, we won't be seeing these titles anytime soon. We can only hope that someday Square Enix will come to their senses, but considering it's been about three years of dismal reviews and no change in sight, I'm not holding my breath. Knights of Sidonia, Volume 1. This week I thought I'd do a review. Knights of Sidonia is a new sci-fi title published by Vertical. It's by Tsutomu Nihei, the creator of the titles Blame and Noise, both published by the now-defunct Tokyopop and Biomega, which Viz Media published as part of their signature line. It doesn't have an age rating, but I would call it for older teens. It retails for twelve ninety five US. I talked a little bit about this title in my last podcast, but this will be a full review. Knights of Sidonia follows Nagate Tanikaze, a youth who has grown up in the bowels of the seed ship the Sidonia, raised by his grandfather Hiroki Saito, who died three years before the beginning of the story. One day, he goes out in search of rice. He disobeys a sign left by his grandfather and takes a forbidden route that leads him up into the ship proper where humanity has been living. Humanity has changed. They have achieved photosynthesis, new genders, and even birthing clones. This is all new to Nagate, who still has to eat for his nutrition and whose interactions with people was either in a battle simulator or with his grandfather. His entrance is far from grand, as he is arrested as a rice thief. But a sponsor appears who offers him a chance to become a guard pilot trainee and to pilot the Tsugumori, the ace unit from the last Gauna War. Thousands of years ago, the Gauna attacked and destroyed Earth and its solar system, leaving humanity to drift in their enormous seed ships. One appears now, while Nagate and several other trainees are out on a mission to mine ice blocks from an asteroid. While the Gauna is stopped, it isn't defeated. This volume ends on an ominous note. I enjoyed Knights of Sidonia, which is saying something since hard sci-fi like this isn't usually my cup of tea. Nihei does a good job of building up the world through Nagate's discovery of it. The reader is right there with Nagate, learning the rules of the new society he's been thrust into. He seems to adjust fairly well, though he does have a few fa paws that make his integration a little difficult. His reliance on food instead of photosynthesis does not make him popular with his fellow trainees as it causes him to smell, something he's reminded of constantly. He becomes a target of bullying, something he just seems to accept. One of his more humorous mistakes is to be doing a gravity belt check in front of the women's photosynthesis room, where he's literally left hanging. He does manage to make friends with the fellow trainee Izana Shinatose, who seems to have taken a liking to him. 
He also unintentionally makes an enemy of Norio Kunato, who is top of the class and apparently jealous of Nagata getting to pilot the Sugumori. He comes off as a snob with the way he looks down at Nagate and Izana, but Nagate's skill with the Tsukumori and amazing healing abilities make it hard to dispute his right to pilot it. While I don't generally care about hard sci-fi, I do love space, and the sci-fi elements that relate to space travel are well done in this title. Humanity has been out in space for thousands of years by this point, so it makes sense that there would be evolutionary changes. With little space to spare on a ship, the proposed changes are plausible. The tech was believable as well. Being out in space and having to concentrate on surviving would mean little time and energy that could be devoted to innovation outside of that survival. The spacesuits have some upgrades, but in general are recognizable as flight suits. If any innovations were going on, they would be in the weapons. The Sidonia is equipped with weapons for bigger battles, such as its heavy mass cannon but the guards are really the main defense against the Gaunas. When they are equipped with a special weapon, the Kabizashi, and can hit the right spot, the Gaunas can be stopped. I like that there wasn't any magical tech like Star Trek. This is a world of infrastructure, pipes, and girders, with buildings built around it. It's a more gritty reality that isn't hidden behind facades. The Gaunas are an intriguing enemy. They don't seem to have any consciousness, at least as far as the first volume has shown. But then, little has been said about the Gaunas. They seem to be parasitic, using anything organic to change and grow. They also have a lot of tentacles. They are not a pretty sight. They seem to float around in space until they find some sort of life to take over. There doesn't seem to be any intention in their actions. They are just doing what they do, but they will fight just as ferociously as humanity will to survive. I like that the enemy is not some superior race trying to hunt down the human race. It's just a sort of survival of the fittest. While I did enjoy this first volume, I did have some problems. First, the story didn't seem to flow naturally. It felt halting at times. Some transitions felt abrupt. While I have no qualms with Nihei's art, it could be difficult at times to tell some characters apart, and I don't mean the clones. Izana and Shizuka Hoshijiro were very similar, with only hairstyle being the best way to tell them apart, and at one point I confused Izana for Shizuka. The technical work, such as on the ship and the mecha, was well done. Overall, I found Knights of Sidonia to be an entertaining read. There were a lot of questions posed in this first volume, first and foremost being, who is Nagate, and why was he raised in the bowels of the ship? Why was he training to use the guard system? What does the captain of the Sidonia know about Nagate, and what are the Gauna? These questions are what draw me back to the series. Nagate is an interesting protagonist, as he is unassuming, but obviously possessed of great skill. I want to see more of his story. I will give this title 4.5 out of 5 stars. Volumes 1 and 2 are now available, with Volume 3 to be released in June. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at mangazanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.